let's uh, take Buhari three years to the market straight. Ayodhi Jiebo, who is the managing director and chief executive officer at uh, Afro Invest Securities, is live here in the studios this morning uh, to bring us up to speed as we celebrate Democracy Day on Markets Close on Tuesday. We're back to business on Wednesday. Good morning. Yeah, good it's morning. It's good to have you here. Thanks for having uh, me. Three years of the Buhari's administration, I'm sure you've read part of this document that the administration spoke glowingly about the FX market, about the Eurobond issuance and restructuring the local uh, treasuries market, three trillion naira, and what we've done with the stock market in 2017, a record 40%. So it looks good, all uh, we've done, but we want to have your thoughts on three years or the last three years of this administration from the market point of view? Yes, um, it's interesting. We're looking at the last three years from 2015, um, though this administration started very slow, and there were some very avoidable um, mistakes that were made that slowed down the market. In 2015, uh, treasury bills yield uh, closed around 5% uh, and rose significantly to around 20% in, uh, in 2016 before moderating to about 14% in 2017. Uh, and you know what the implication of that is that even lending, when you see risk-free investment, mm. giving as high as 22% effective yield, you would um, most times, especially even the banks, would prefer to channel most of the funds or deposits received from, the, from their customers to that particular form of investment. In addition, when you look at also in terms of bond, bonds uh, yields also average uh, in 2015 well, from a low of about 12% um, went as high as 16% in 2016. And we saw uh, based on the government's decision to see how to restructure the budget, reducing domestic borrowing uh, and going for more of uh, foreign borrowings, that has helped mod um, moderate the, 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 uh, the rates from uh, towards the end of last year to this year. That's very, it's positive because um, even for the banks that have been enjoying that high yield um, interest or return on that, on the investment, they will also be forced now to look at some other critical sector where they can earn higher yield. Though risk within the economy is still very prevalent, which uh, has also been hampering lending to the private sector. If you look at the the data that was published, Q1 data on lending to the private sector, that has not um, been very favorable to, to the private sector. Coming to equities, we've looked, looking at performance in equities, 2015 uh, market was, was down about, 7%, uh, about 17%, which moderated in 2016 to about 7%, and very impressive in 2017, our 42% uh, return. Uh, we saw that uh, you can't dissociate the market is like the barometer for the economy for whatever is happening in the economy. Great. So when you that, yeah. that's as far as portfolio investment is concerned, yes. and folks are trading the secondary window on the primary market. We've seen a number of companies delisting from the Nigerian stock exchange, and that happened very frequently in 2016 and 2017. The market is a place where companies will have to go and raise capital. Of course, we've seen a number of rice issues. La Fight Africa, USC, and everyone. But in terms of listings, we've seen very few listings, but far more delisting on the market. Are companies in Nigeria worried about the state of the market? And that's where they are delisting seven of big names last year. Yes, for, we need to first identify reasons why they are delisting. For some of these companies that are delisting, maybe they are for strategic purposes. Um, you see, um, even like for seven up, um, uh, acquiring uh, majority minority uh, share, shareholders uh, in Nigeria. acquiring minority shareholders in Nigeria, mm -hmm. they prefer to to delist so that um, it will reduce in terms of reporting. But when we look at in terms of attracting the uh, companies to list in the market, the first thing is before you list, what well, you you want to be guaranteed that you will be able to assess capital. And when you look at in terms of the consumer spending. In, in, the, in the Nigerian economy, if you take out the institutional investors, you take out the foreign investors, the uh, percentage of retail investors be about 30%. About you have less than 4 million CSS accounts in Nigeria. By the time you look at the unique, maybe you have about 2 million domestic investors trading in Nigeria. But so when you look at the economy has just been recovering, 
does not even is it has not even reached the pre 2015 era and is the recession is the recession to be blamed or the market was already on a downward trend before recession came I think um, the recession to will be to be uh, we can also attribute that to recession. Not the market a little Not, bit further. because you can't dissociate whatever is happening within the economy from the from the market. So for for players within the uh, within uh, play, players within the market, they have to also be empowered in terms of your savings. You must have in order that of your savings that you can invest. But when most times your disposable income is almost higher than what you are even earning. Uh, so have there's nothing, nothing to, to, spare. To, to spare to save and, and to invest. Ex 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 exactly. In terms of uh, the other markets, and uh, the FX market was, was, was quite good. But again, if we stick a little bit with the, uh, the uh, equities market and the capital market or securities market, this is a period in which we don't have a full board of the SEC in place. Yes. Um, uh, that is a confidence issue? That's something that should be fixed quickly? It should be fixed quickly. You've seen the last three years, we've had like three different um, head, uh, DGs, of the head of the SEC, and that sends a very wrong signal to even the foreign investors. And in terms of the required return, if they actually want to invest in this capital, it will be higher by the time they price in some of those risks. Uh, even for domestic investors, they won't also be sure in terms of protecting the domestic investors. So in terms of the instability we've seen within the, uh, the head of the SEC, it also may play a major role in terms of capital market issues. But we know a lot is being done to see how uh, investors, uh, how uh, companies will be attracted in terms of listing in the capital market. Yeah, we're looking, we're expecting that the major one, the MTN uh, IPO, would come be pay maybe before the end of the year. That's also going to also change the structure of the market. We know Dante Cement constitutes over 30% in terms of the, the weightings. So that would also dilute it. And we see some representation in terms of from telecoms, which has, has not been actually represented within the, the stock market. So um, we, the, the government also needs to see that most of even the listed companies, they need policies that will make them uh, strive in terms of cost of doing business. Most of them have had to provide their power, have to provide their road uh, for them to be able to be in business. And as such, in terms of their margin, that would also moderate their margin. So when you are looking at any potential investor looking at the return, expected return from some of these investments, that would be minimized. So policies is required to drive transactions or activity within the capital market. A, a quick one on the side of privatization. The market likes or loves privatization program, but there's no clarity yet as to how and when Buhari's administration. Uh, President Buhari has 365 days left as the CEO of the country, unless he wins the second term by next election. He has 365 days left. Yet we have not seen any market-based privatization in three years. Yes, I think they may also be trying to test the market because when you look at past privatization, the power privatization, we have not recovered even from it. There are a lot of issues that are still involved. Governments are not most are known not to be keeping to, to their rules. Um, you see, for most of them, tariff, current tariff does not portray, not based on the agreement that was signed when you check the MITO and policy, then that was not the agreement they had with, some, with the discourse. And those, those challenges are still prevalent. When you also look at even the telecoms, they are unable to also increase their tariffs. So mixing politics with business. So even if you are going to privatize some of these companies, we expect maybe they do some form of restructuring so that the percentage or the value that you also get from some of these companies are significant. Uh, reducing your stake, maybe if you have 70 percent, you can reduce it from 70 to 50 percent. So Steve, you still want to have controlling interest. But m not most investors will be willing to allow government have controlling interest in a company that will be injecting significant fund of money, knowing the inst political instability that is still prevalent in Nigeria. Okay, we'll look at the market. And, uh, and just bef before you came into the studio, some of our viewers were asking questions and says we should discuss. And I'm sure you've put that on Twitter as well. So we should include it uh, to emerging market crisis and how a strong dollar will soon start causing a problem in Nigeria. What's your take? Yes, it's already um, yeah, it's already causing it's serious pressure on um, that's on, in the I and E window. 
we've seen when you look at the last three or four weeks, the fixed income market, there's been a lot of sell-offs. Even the equities market can also be attributed to sell-off by foreign investors. Uh, because when you, you see there's about $1 billion in terms of um, demand to be met at the IA and E window, we know the CBN will try as much as possible to ensure that this demand is met and there will be no accumulation like we saw pre, uh, pre IA and E window in 2017 or uh, 16 to 17. So uh, it's, we are not shielded from this. Yes, we have strong reserves, but uh, with, if we continue to peg, and uh, we continue to peg the Naira at this current rate because of election for, no, for us not to devalue, um, we, it will continue to send a very wrong signal. And the reserves that we feel that it's, um, it's buoyant enough may not be able to fund the demand that may arise as a result of pressure or capital flight. Between now at least until the first half of next year. Technically yes. speaking? Yes. Technically no. speaking. Thank you. Let's hang Thanks in there for, for today. Me. I'm sure we'll have a lot more to discuss in the days ahead. Ayodhi Jebo is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer at uh, Afrinvest Securities. Nigeria has its first indigenous professor of capital markets. What does it really mean about getting capital markets education via the universities? We got all this live from Abuja coming up next.